welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be doing a comparison between the i9-12900K with the E-Cores enabled and disabled. So um, the 12900K uses P-Cores which run considerably faster than the E-Cores and in return this can kind of hinder your gaming performance depending on the workload and how it's distributed. Sometimes um, the scheduler in the, your operating system, mainly Windows 11, doesn't always allocate the load to the faster cores and sometimes this can make you lose performance. You also don't have access to the AVX 512 instructions while using your e-cores. Now, I've heard a lot about the e-cores disabled providing faster performance. I just want to put that to the test. So right now I'm running all my p-cores at 5.3 gigahertz and all my e-cores at 4.4 4 gigahertz. Now, if you look at my AVX control, all it says is enable, no mention of AVX 512 because it's locked away as the e-cores actually do not support AVX 512 instructions. The only way to get access to them is to disable the e-cores completely. Now I'm using the um, MSI Z690 Unified motherboard. In order for me to get um, access to um, my AVX 512 instructions to disable the e-cores, so all you do is you go to e-core or p-core control. I want to get control of my e-core, so you just enable that and it will say enable and disable all e-core. So as you can see now, each e-core is completely disabled. Now if we return back to the main overclocking menu, you'll now see under AVX support, it has AVX 512 and this really confirms that your e-cores are disabled. I'm going to enable that now. You can also set your AVX offset. So with um, the 512 instructions, reduce the core clock when you're under the AVX 512 load, which is usually quite a high power draw and usually generates quite a lot of heat. For me, I'm just going to leave it at zero. So it stays at 5.3 gigahertz and uh, nothing will fluctuate. And uh, we'll see if I get better game performance with the E-Cores disabled and AVX 512 also enabled. So um, I'm going to run a few games now and uh, I'll come back to you guys with the results. So at 1080p, you can see that with the equals disabled, there's a nine FPS boost, which is actually uh, pretty welcome. And it's good that it does actually have an effect, but at 1440p, it's only a two frames per second increase as things become more GPU bound. Didn't bother with 4K as it's basically the same. So at 1080p, you can see that there was a 15 FPS reduction with e-cores disabled, which was not the result I was expecting or looking for. 
that came as quite a surprise. And at 1440p again, another reduction, this time 5 FPS. So as you can see, Far Cry 6 benefiting from the e-cores. At 1080p, you can see things are dead even at 146 FPS each. But with the e cores enabled, you do have higher averages and a higher minimum. So there is a slight difference there. Um, at 1440p, you can see there is a one FPS difference, which is basically marginal error. So I wouldn't really say there's a, a difference there. But again, you can see higher averages with the e cores enabled. Don't get between me and my gun, heretic! At 1080p, you can see around a 4 FPS reduction while having the e-cores disabled. So Borderlands 3, another game that doesn't seem to benefit positively while having the e-cores disabled at 1440p. And around about 2 FPS reduction in performance, which could be margin of error, but again, no performance gain here. At 1080p, you can see 272 FPS average with e cores enabled and 271, which is within margin of error. It's quite interesting to see both runs 
going back and forth. In some areas, the e would provide a benefit, in some areas it wouldn't. And uh, much the same with that 1440p, so nothing really to gain by disabling e in the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You're good! You're good! You're good! And stop! Y'all take care. Ready for more? You bet. Let's hit it. So I only ran a 1080p score because there was barely anything in it. Everything else became even more GPU bound. And as you can see, basically the same, no real benefit to disabling the e-course for that title. So it all comes down to this. There are some games that will benefit from having the uh, e-course disabled, whether that's from AVX as well as an additional kind of boost, who knows. But at the same time, there are games that are going to negatively impact your performance as well and funnily enough i think windows 11 does a great job in scheduling the course to the performance scores rather than the e course when it comes to the workload so it's not something i would really do as i i like to have the productivity performance from the e course and uh, it really does depend on what you're you're doing if you need avx then of course go ahead so it won't be a benefit for everybody and it really does depend on the game so anyway guys that's pretty much it for me Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.